welcome once again to the MBS Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hi, hi. Ah, and awesome internet reviewer Silverquill. I am a hyper-evolved guppy. Ah, <laughs> uh, now Silver just changed species and everything. I didn't know you had that operation. Oh, God, no. It was legal in Tijuana. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, for yeah, me, it's Thailand. Yeah. Did you manage to keep your your wings at least, or did they take them as well? I am now a horror beyond imagining. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> let me guess. You're you, a have, you have a horn and seven more wings? That's uh, right. I'm, I'm super god porcupine. <laughs> Guffy of Equestria. Oh, you're me. Okay, no. Some reminder of that Simpsons episode where Homer gets a lot of... Uh, surgery done to himself and he ends up turning into like a Frankenstein monster holy <laughs> crap anyway <laughs> nightmare fuel for me mm. not to sleep tonight yeah. and today we are going to be reviewing uh, the Spike micro comic that is issue 9 of the micro series written by Rob Anderson and with art by Agnes Bar- uh, Garbowska uh, now in this one comic, we have Spike wondering why he doesn't have a pet, and uh, because he sees Twilight and Fluttershy, they have their pets and all that. So, in order for him to get a pet, he orders what else? Some sea monkeys from uh, a comic that he's reading. Uh, and as it turns out, Spike taking care of something only and results in more hijinks. And that is as far as I'm going to read of the of the story because basically this it's weird how little plot there is to this comic and yet how much you can spoil on it if you start talking about it yeah that is true that is true uh, th- th- this comic is an interesting one um, we're going to we're going to go inverted alphabetical uh, so yeah, right. like always I'm going to be the last and Silver is going to be the, the first and we're going to forget about you Norman because you don't matter oh, and screw you <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm going to leave the floor to you guys, and then I'm going to be the last one to say anything about the comic. So, guys, it's all yours. Then I guess I go first. I'm sorry, Norman. I want to hear what you think. <laughs> you go. You go first, man. Are you eating ice cream, Rarity? <laughs> uh, well, well, funny that we're referencing a spike. <laughs> episode because here we are spike comic and poor poor spike he yeah. just ah poor guy can't seem to get a decent plot sometimes oh yeah All right, but let's forget about his talk about chasing rarity uh <laughs> now this comic for me was kind of well that happened it wasn't the micro comics in my eyes are meant to be celebrations of the characters at their best Spike is at his best when he's a helper, when he's supporting Twilight. Very rarely when he has the episode front and center does it go well because he's generating the problem and usually it's the ponies who have to solve it. <laughs> uh, see, Secret of My Excess for best example. <laughs> Here, well, Spike is a great helper to Twilight. What's the first thing they do? Send Twilight away. <laughs> And so it's Spike left to make his own mess. Now, thankfully, he does uh, fix it himself with a little bit of in- plot convenient ex- uh, inspiration. But I just feel like this is an episode where events happen, but Spike himself is not really celebrated. <laughs> and so it's just sort of, you know, it's just it's an event. It's not the worst, but I can't really point and say this is the greatest part of the comic. Although, as someone who has to draw his own vectors for his reviews, I totally sympathize with him having to dress up for every lesson. <laughs> so, my turn? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you go for it. You go for it. Go for it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> how do I put this? It's a spike issue. It's spike. <laughs> what can we do with spike? Apparently, not much in the micro series. Like Silver said, yeah. Uh, He works well with others, but when he's the star, it's kind of hard. From what I've read in this comic, uh, things happen without him doing much. He starts the problem, and the problem kind of solves himself. He only takes action or has a proactive um, solution to things when 
he needs to f- solve the problem. And well, he kind of did it well. And the outcome, uh, the ending was pretty awesome. That's much I can say. To me, this comic is okay. It it is an okay comic. It it's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. It's one of those comics that I can go back to and read normal, uh, no problem. Uh, if there is nothing else that I that I that I could be reading that that is not very likely, there is always something better to read. But the one thing that makes me like this comic um, more than the average, uh, it, it it is an average for me. Um, like Silver said, yeah, it is true that the micro series are the celebration of each one of the characters when they are at their best, and it is true that Spike is the best when he is supporting others, but when he's on his own, he doesn't usually sign, sign, mm-hmm. shine, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is it is very true that he doesn't shine up until the last six or seven pages. <laughs> During the rest of the comic, he's pretty much mocking things up all the time, like. Uh, I love the fact that he's getting sea monkeys, <laughs> which is a product of the 90s. We all know about sea monkeys. We saw the commercials. They're like, oh, you just have to put the powder in the water and you can create your own life forms. What are sea you monkeys, teach- by the way? Yeah, that's that's what the that that's what the sea monkeys were. Like, like they will give them to you on um, these envelopes. You put mm-hmm. the, the 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 contents in water. You wait one day, and the day later, you have like little life forms. Moving like they are, like, they are, they were. It was very weird, but it it did work. It mm-hmm. was a thing. It was it was a it was massive in the nineties. It did happen, and then it completely died out, like the sea monkeys, because they had like a lifespan of five days or something like that, and that's <laughs> where the business was. You need to buy more sea monkeys. It oh. was like live action tamagotchis. <laughs> oh boy, no. Honestly speaking, I got no idea what sea monkeys are. They're they brine are, they are, shrimp. They're really? Brian Sh- really? Yep. Oh, well, let's see. That's I, what they were. I'm just hopping on, and it's on Wikipedia, so of course it's true. <laughs> <laughs> redaction. <laughs> it needs redaction. So, wait, yes. they're shrimps? Yes. Uh, sea monkeys is a brand name for brine shrimp, a group of crustaceans undergoing cryptobiosis, sold in hatching kits as a novelty aquarium pets. Let's see here. What is a cry? Cryptobiosis. Cryptobiosis is an metabolic state of life entered by an organism in response to adverse environmental conditions, such as freezing and oxygen deficiency. In this state, all processes stop, preventing reproduction, development, and repair. So basically, they were <laughs> they were freeze dried life forms. That's not a word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's it is true, Norman. You're gonna have to censor yourself for that. I, but I yeah, know. <laughs> that it did happen. It was a thing. It was a thing during the '90s. At least in the Western world, it was a thing, and it was it was massive. And I was so happy to see that that's the the story that they give to Spike. And it was all, I was I also found very funny how they um, he keeps he he messes things up and they fix it for him. Okay, you know what? I have to say something here. Um, it was... Oh, go ahead. All right. the, you, what Silver mentioned before where they don't reproduce, they don't fix themselves, and they're basically dead. What happens in this comic is the total opposite of what happened yeah, because of what again, Spike did. Because well, that, in reality, they didn't consider the use of potions and magic to yeah, make I them know, different. Just... So it is, it is funny because when you are a kid and you have these things, you are like, what happened if they could reproduce? What happened mm-hmm. if they could grow older or bigger? Or like... And this comic kind of answers those questions. <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm, I'm completely digressing to what I said about what I like about this comic. Everything mm-hmm. else is average for me. But the, the thing that makes this comic... Uh, okay, is the ending where mm, mm. Uh, these uh, these life forms they become so intelligent and they become so big that they start questioning <laughs> things and all that. And it is funny. Uh, in any <sighs> other comic, in any other show, this is the point where another of the like this is the point where Twilight will c- get, uh, come out of the door and say, "Oh, Spike, <laughs> what have you been doing? Guess I have to fix your mistake now." But no, Spike doesn't. It doesn't happen like like that. Spike takes upon his uh, responsibility to teach these guys to give them an education, and by the time he's done, they are so smart that they don't see the need to be with him, so they go away. And it is, I actually, I thought it was very, I thought it was very clever, very good, and very, um, very beautiful in that regard, because 
Look at that. A spike is doing something that in other places would be reserved for a main character or a supporting character that is like, oh, you, you cannot <laughs> fix your own mistake. Guess I'm going to have to solve it for you. But <laughs> um, I was very happy. I was like, thank you for not portraying Spike as a useless tweet, which is usually what he's portrayed as. That he's, he's just the comic relief. He's the hundred of the, of the main six, but not on that comic. So, yeah, it doesn't celebrate the fact that Spike is a good supporting character, but it celebrates the fact that Spike can think quick on his feet and be able to solve a situation without the help of anyone else involved. Mm-hmm. Although, although we should mention that he, he gained this sense of responsibility watching a mother and her foal having a conversation about uh, using magic and that there are no shortcuts. True, and right? the, the best thing is that uh, this, these are not... Uh, a mother and foal that we've seen in the show. So you see, guys, OCs can be a good thing for stories. <laughs> uh, you know what this means? Symbolism! Symbolism! Yeah. It, it is but, fine, though, because you also would get your inspiration from uh, external, um, exter- external stimuli. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it could be that. It could be a, a bird feeding its young, or it could be, the <laughs> yeah. I don't know, the sun and the moon crossing in the middle of the sky. I have no idea. There is always something out there that is going to uh, uh, make that light bulb above your, above your head light up. I also like in this comic, as they show these little creatures developing, though they were sea beasts, but now they're not. <laughs> it is It is funny to see them developing this culture I'll just say it right now. Simpsons did it. <laughs> but it's fun to see them doing all this developing steam power. And then as they have a disagreement on if they could clean the floor or the wall, they set to war. If that, is, if that isn't a commentary on uh, human evolution and culture, <laughs> I don't know what is. Yeah. You know, Insert Iraq joke here. Oh, no, no. No, uh, <laughs> no but the, the, here's, here's what I like about the micros. Then here's what I've been saying since um, book one is that the micro are about lessons. In this issue, the lesson here is there's no shortcut in life. Everything has to be done step by step where you learn. You do, you make a mistake. You learn from that mistake. You make a mistake. You learn from that mistake. And here, Spike as a pet owner, needs to teach or train his pets on doing the right thing and whatnot. And for these sea monkeys and whatnot, I won't call them pets anymore. I'm I'm saying that they're an intelligent life form of their own. (laughs) And And then we end on a letter to Princess Celestia saying, hey, you've got an entirely new species wandering Equestria. Good luck with that. Three issues later, we're going to see the invasion of the of these guys. <laughs> They're going to be like, there is an invasion going on on the edge of the Everfree Forest, and then these guys come back. They have become like super advanced <laughs> creatures, and it's like, it's like <laughs> we have come to make Spike our superior overlord. Oh, you, come, you know what? father. You, you know what? Here's the here's the thing that I want to see in the future for the comics is um, these creatures making a comeback because these creatures are awesome i can't wait to see what they do with them well perhaps they do nothing because remember how the the show is a slice of life and everything that they continue the formula of we're going to make the show give it somewhat a continuity but we're not going to make it so you have to watch 15 episodes so you can understand what happens on episode 16 um mm. that is something similar that's going on in the comic so far it hasn't gone marvel and with that, I mean, oh, in order to read issue 15, you need to read issue 5 for the Spike series. And uh, then you have to go read issue 7 of the Rarity series. And um, if you want to know what happens in Rainbow Dash issue, issue 10, you have to read the Darien Do spin-off. And it's oh, like, ah, okay. oh, please stop that. We haven't gone that route yet. I oh, hope yeah. we never do, really. <laughs> you know, Look, but if, I do. Sorry. If we do go the Marvel route, the ponies will be fighting other ponies and forget oh, about villains cool. entirely. Yep, yep. No, <laughs> but honestly, on my side, like Maybe honestly, the funny civil war. Oh god, no. <laughs> the new the solar republic, the, the solar empire versus the new lunar republic. <laughs> uh, Luna uh, is fourth to the pony registration, while Celestia <laughs> is against it. <laughs> oh god, no! Sister, please don't make me. Uh, and Applejack will be Captain Equestria. And then there is one issue where they kill her and they have to find a substitute. <laughs> and she's just an Apple Blue. Oh, God, please just love that. 
<laughs> and then Twilight makes a deal with Tyrick that their that their friendship oh, never happened. No, <laughs> and we have a the red leader of the of the Crystal Empire. Oh, and we have a, no. and we have a retcon and a retcon and a retcon. Oh, one more it's day. Let's go join with Green Chrysalis. Oh God, one more day. Oh. You, you evil, evel comic you. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll, my we'll Anyway, you know, well, we're we're sure <laughs> of... <laughs> we're on a tangent right now. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tangent, but that, but that's partly because this comic doesn't give you a lot to. Stuff to happens. On. I mean, you see the sea, the sea beasts. They start just growing. They do tricks. They expand. It's all a nice progression. I'm not mm-hmm. saying there's no structure, but at the same time, there's not a lot of oh wow moments. Usually, we're going on about some moment in the plot that really jumps out visually or comedically aside from the civil war of clean floor, clean wall, <laughs> not a lot really, uh, you know, that's really jumping out at me here. Mm-hmm. I mean, the comic itself is a really interesting take on evolution. <laughs> oh, wow. But still, oh, you mean the comic or the, the, the movie or the actual event? <laughs> No, I'm not joking. There is, if you guys don't know about this, do you guys remember a movie from the year 2001 mm-hmm. starring David Duchovny and Julianne Moore called Evolution? Uh, yeah, yeah, that one, that one, that one. No, I'm talking about this comic right now that we're reviewing. For some yeah, reason, but I, think, I, mean, I, I thought it was a Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> no, it's, no, Nicolas Cage wasn't in it. <laughs> Although, it could have been glorious. Imagine Nicolas oh, Cage God. in a movie about aliens invading the planet. <laughs> Oh, wait, that um, evolution. Sorry, there was a different evolution. But yeah, I saw that one. I saw that no. one. No, but, but he didn't. But... Spike didn't defeat them with uh, head and shoulders. Head and shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He didn't <laughs> defeat them with head and shoulders. So it no, no. Funny. But, but anywho, like, like I was saying, uh, this is an interesting take on evolution by the comic writers. And it's, uh, how do I put this? It's a friendly or a kid-friendly version of evolution and how things progress and get smart and the way that one person teaches someone affects for the generation like how spike teaches uh, them what is a dog what is a cat and what is stinky hmm. yeah so as things goes on you get that progression of oh why do they call angel bunny stinky <laughs> instead of a rabbit well you got your answer there although are you sure it's evolution because this started by one being supplying the magical means for them to start living. Mm-hmm. So it's not creationism, it's not evolution, it's cre- crevolution. <laughs> you know, that's, okay, I'm not well, going to touch I'm this. Not gonna, I'm not going to go into religious arguments. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, I, I am going to say, I'm going to say this. Is, I actually like it because it's kind of like um, nurture versus nature. Mm-hmm. And all that, and ha- and and it's you can have a, a nurture versus nature debate talking about mm. this comic. Yeah, but easy, no. easy, and 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 kind of like devolve into what would that happen if Spike hadn't done anything? Like if <laughs> if Spike hadn't taken measures into his own uh, claws, what would it turn out to be? Would it be like a happy ending? Would it be like a bad ending? No, Do I mean, they have okay. like devolve into nothing. Well, if what you're saying, okay, if we're going to entertain the thought, like if Spike didn't do anything, the sea monkeys or the sea bees will just die off like any normal product. But because of his tampering of um, magic or inclusion of magic, uh, that give life or get that give extended life to the sea monkeys or sea beasts, whatever you want to call them. So, I like yeah. to call them sea monkeys. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. At the end, at the end form that they have, they. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. They look like Mudkip. Mudkip. <laughs> they look like the Pokemon Mudkip. If they were uh... hyper advanced Mudkips, Crevol- <laughs> yeah. revolution, oh, revolution in process. Revolution. Are we actually? Are we actually making that a thing, Silver? We're going to create revolutionism. I, mean, <laughs> I like. I like that word. I'm going with it. Revolution. Someone now, started yeah. you on the path to evolution. Oh boy. So, scientists and religious people that are angry at Silver Quill, they can go to, the, to his YouTube channel and uh, yell at him over there. Please don't come to us. Uh, Please. Boy. <laughs> uh, boy. Well, you can. I'll tell you where you can crevolve yourselves. 
Mm. Should have not been drinking. <laughs> yes, I think. I... <laughs> Go yeah, pre-evolve right. yourself. <laughs> what? Uh, I nearly, but... I, I nearly taught uh, Norman uh, coffee spray. It's super oh, effective. God, no. Oh god, no! For no, the no. Creval mudkip. <laughs> Uh, the mega mudkip is oh, Norman, is, Norman is almost kind of a mudkip. He's Malaysian. He's getting hey, <laughs> and uh, we're awkward. Yeah, <laughs> no, awkward. But and anywho, okay. um, I am a Spanish torchic anyway. So, <laughs> but anywho, I, I think that's about it. Like, what can we say? <laughs> we all have no, positive like, things I will, to I, say. I actually, I actually would agree with Silver right there. We are <laughs> digressing and mm-hmm. we are going into so many tangents because yeah. the comic doesn't give you much to work with up until the last three or four mm-hmm. pages. And the, the rest of the that... comic is just, it, it, yeah, it, it does leave you with kind of that feel that, okay, yeah, well, that happened. Mm-hmm. But uh, to me, it's a, it's a good feel. It's like, okay, yeah, that happened. But at least they didn't screw the character of Spike. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They didn't screw it up. Out of all the things that the comic should have and shouldn't have done uh, is make the character of, of Spike worse. And this one didn't. That, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's the best thing that I get out of this comic. So, yeah, stuff happened, but, but not bad stuff. Mm-hmm. It was good True. stuff, but it was tough. Yeah, one thing I'll say about the micros in general is that they never dragged a character down. Some I'll had better to. show. Yeah, some had better showings than others. I thought the the Fluttershy micro could have done much better in that regard, but mm-hmm. it didn't make yeah. her look like a worse character. Um, no, that's wrong. Yeah, I I I, ha- I go with the same on on the Applejack micro in that. Well, I already said what I thought about the Applejack micro mm-hmm. on that on, on on our review, but it's. Basically, that is, it, it, they didn't make Applejack look bad. They just mm-hmm. didn't make Applejack look better than what she already does. True that, true that. As for this comic that we're doing right now, the Spike Micro, it's nothing much we can do. I mean, the thing that we can discuss is a bit heavy-handed. It's creationism versus evolution. Like We, we can go that route if we want to, but I don't think we're the right person to talk to. We need Dr. Phil or maybe Bill Nye here to, just to talk <laughs> about this thing. We need someone from the Church of Revolution. Oh, God. <laughs> we are definitely making this a thing, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> At least for this podcast. Oh, you, know that, you know you know that uh, L. Ron Hubbard started like that, right? You have to be careful. <laughs> oh, praise D. to you, Silva. El- L. Ron Hubbard right. made a boat, boatload of money for off of a silly bet. <laughs> Wow. Apparently that, that's the story anyway. That's what I hear, that he bet another guy on founding a, fa- a religion and son of a gun. There you go. Wow. I think my... MBS I, show. <laughs> uh, and we, the founding I, leader is James. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't had my Thetons ch- tested yet. <laughs> uh, you mean you've been the Chlorians? Oh, Lordy. <laughs> we, can only get so, we can only get so silly. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. it's the funny. I have is... a friend who are... <laughs> the force is with the, the force I have is a friend. Just... This is a thing. Well, I have a friend whose father. Every time they have to do the census in religion, he says Jedi. So yeah, I guess it comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, I think it's the, for... says... the force is microscopic parasites living in your body. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> well you know why George oh. Lucas put that there right oh god because the, the, on, the one and only existence of the midi-chlorians was a, a narrative uh, resource that he was using just so only one could tell to uh, Liam Neeson oh my god Anakin Skywalker has so much more f- uh, force power than Master Yoda no yeah it's no a- he actually did that that's why he's there that's why that's there yeah, and they're uh, like, uh, "He's made a chlorians are over nine thousand." <laughs> but 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 but, uh, James, uh, should we end this? Do, do we really want to? I am loving this chat of talking about everything <laughs> but the comic. <laughs> no, like I say, there are no midichlorians within the sea beasts. Oh boy! <laughs> Although I, I guess we should take some pleasure in the fact that Angel won a pet competition. Mentioned at the start, but his thunder is stolen, so he's meh. Yep, which, <laughs> meh. which 
Which kind of sums up this comic in a nutshell. We're we're just kind of going mad over the whole thing. It is a mad kind of. It it, it it's a happy mad, but it's still a mad. Mm-hmm. That is the problem. Meh. Is that it is it is a happy mad, but it's still a mad. I mean, it's happy, it's, but it, it's a mess. <laughs> a I meh. see what you did there. To me, uh. to me, it's a it's a meh. It's a meh. Well, yeah. You're talking about that coming and they go meh. <laughs> But any but who never mind. Next yeah. Week's okay. Fi- yeah. Fi- final. Oh, final uh, thoughts. Okay. Sorry. Final thoughts. Yeah. Let's. Well, I think we are. We just gave them right. Oh, Meh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh-huh. it's not bad. It's not good. But no, it's true. It's not bad. But it could be better. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. It's decent. It's it's even. It's safe. But mm-hmm. when you when you're trying to celebrate or at least high, spotlight a character, you need to be more than safe. Mm-hmm. Yes, it could have true. been. It could have been a lot further, um, story-wise, <laughs> art-wise. We didn't talk about the art in the previous comic review either, mm-hmm. and I should. I should. I should have talked about the the art in this one as well. Being the uh, one of the art residents of this podcast, along with Silver. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the artwork is gorgeous. It's very pretty, but the story is a bit a bit hollow, and mm-hmm. it could have been a lot better. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make me feel like I wasted my my money or my time. It doesn't feel like that. Uh, but it could have been so much better. Oh, true that, true that. But you been. know, but you know what? It's uh, it's the second to last issue. Like the next issue. Oh, that's a woozy. I mean, oh, oh, what? Do you mean? Do you mean? Are you talking about Luna's micro? <laughs> yes. Is that a woozy, really? <laughs> I mean, that's a woozy one to re- review because it's so good. Like, oh god, we, I, I'm gonna guess we are all gonna gush on that comic when it comes out. Let's let's wait and see. Yeah, yep, yep. But anywho, James, Ooh, um, suspense, indeed. Suspense. Uh, but anywho, James, uh, I, I, I'm guessing that's our final thoughts on said comics. Yeah, let's talk about the comic that we're going to be reviewing next week. Yep, yep. And Norman, you have to tell me, are we reviewing the annual or are we reviewing issue n- number 24? Okay, um, I, I I don't want to put this too up to the audience because the audience don't respond that quick. So I'm going to put it up to you guys because I vote yes and we do the 2013 and the 2014 annual back to back. Oh, both annuals. Yes, because we can't talk one without the other. Uh, yeah, we totally can't talk one without the other. Yeah, yeah, true that, but we we need to explain the setup. But uh, you know what? Well, we'll they put... are not connected, Norman. I mean, oh. the Equestria Girls <laughs> annual has nothing to do with the Power Ponies annual. Okay, but still, yeah, it's up to you guys if you want us to review the 2014 annual. Sorry, the 2013 annual. Let us know. If not, we'll just do the 14 annual. So... Uh, I say next week we just do the 14 annual. What I'm done with so? that. Yeah. Well, part part of me is kind of itching to tackle some of the more recent comics, but I guess we yeah. should wait for that arc to conclude itself. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, I'm down with the 2014 annual, the Power Ponies. Okay, but, let's do that. So, yeah, next week we are going to be reviewing the My Little Pony 2014 annual comic written by Ted Anderson and with art by Ben Bates and color by Heather Breckel and Lauren Perry. Now, this one is going to be fun to tackle. I cannot wait <laughs> yeah. to talk about this one. I don't know about you guys, but I am really looking forward to this. Oh, yep, 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 yep. yep. Talk about the power of friendship. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Intensity. Ooh. I know, I know. This is a fun read. This is a fun read, uh, and we need to address something about the comic before we be uh, before we start, just to get a sense of direction and bipolarness of this comic. But that's for another day. All right. So um, I think that's it for to, for this week's episode. So uh, yeah, this has been James Cork, and I am Norman Sanzo, and I'm gonna go look for a revolutionist. Oh God, no! Let me join you, man. Let me join you. Maybe I can You're become their leader. To... No, you know, the internet has proven that you can find anything for anything on anyone, so you're going to find them. Let me see if I get anything. You're going to find the Church of of Revolutionism. Oh, and someone already made it. Awesome. (laughs) Revolutionism. You're going to discover that it's full of Pokemon fans, because how can there be evolution and God Pokemon in the same universe? Uh... That, 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 That doesn't work. How can that be? 
No, no, no. I, I've been away from Pokemon another, too long. This is a, this is a yeah. discussion for another time, though. Let's wrap it up. See you guys yeah, yeah. On, the next, on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Adios. <laughs>